there's heartbreak and profound frustration across America. Nowhere more so than at the scene of George Floyd's death, where his brother condemned the violence of recent days. Do this peacefully, please. I know he would not want y'all to be doing this. And I'm not saying the people here whoever's doing it, relax. Demonstrations and destruction have swept the country. Curfews ignored as chaos rules. The driver of this tanker was arrested after speeding into a crowd of protesters in Minneapolis. Remarkably, no one was hurt. The catalyst for all this volatility, the gut-wrenching footage of George Floyd's final hours. It's exposed wounds already so deeply felt over the death of yet another black man at the hands of law enforcement that leaves so many others living in fear. It's scary because, like, usually sometimes when you see a police, people run. Incidents like this in Atlanta, Georgia, are only fanning the flames. These two police officers were later fired for using excessive force against protesters. In Fort Lauderdale, Florida, this footage shows a police officer pushing a kneeling woman to the ground. You can see his own colleagues immediately react with anger. He's now being suspended. Shows of force are what the president favors, made clear in his phone call with state governors. You have to dominate. If you don't dominate, you're wasting your time. They're going to run over you. You're going to look like a bunch of jerk. You have to dominate. You have to arrest people and you have to try people. And they have to go to jail for long periods of time. In the capital, Washington, D.C., peaceful daytime protests turn violent overnight with cars and buildings set on fire, a stone's throw from the White House. This is what it looks like today. The mayor is not taking any chances tonight. She's imposed a 7 p.m. curfew to try and avoid more damage and violence. Before lamenting a lack of force, the president was tweeting his usual refrains about approval ratings and fake news. What he's yet to do is address the nation. But Donald Trump is no unifier, so hopes aren't high that his words would have any real impact. His 2020 Democratic rival is trying to fill the empathetic healer void. Joe Biden visited protest sites in his home city of Delaware. We're going to make sure that the economic recovery deals with the institutional structures, the institutional races, but also economic structures that need to be fixed. The Minneapolis police chief says that in his mind, the other three officers who have yet to be charged were complicit in George Floyd's death. But justice won't come overnight. For now, shows of solidarity are going a long way. In New York, officers prompted cheers as they dropped to one knee to pay their respects to the black victims of police brutality. Somewhere in the despair, there's some very tentative, small hope that George Floyd's death could be the turning point that America so desperately needs. Amanda Walker, Sky News, Washington.